Hello again and welcome to Sufre Today, where we take a look at the questions that you've been asking us on social media and we get them answered by Professor Robertson. Hi, Richie, how are you? I'm fine, I'm good. Great. So the latest thing that's been happening now is that we have some people talking about some activity at the Wallaboo River, which would have occurred actually last week. Um, but it seems as yeah. folks thinking that it may or may not be a laha. Can you give a little bit of clarity on what's happening there or what happened there? Right. So what happened is something that normally happens, well, I should say happens from time to time at all the river systems in St. Vincent. When you have heavy rain in the mountains, often you would say locally the river come down, which means it gets muddy, there's a lot more sediment in it, and it flows much faster. Um, it may or may not be associated with some landslides that happen higher up and bring the material down. That's simply what we would say normally. Um, in terms of what people thought it was, and this description of lahars, it has to do with lahars or mud flows are, are, is a term that refers to the remobilization of volcanic material often associated with an active eruption or recent eruption. Um, and it's a term that came from Indonesia. So it's usually associated with recent activity. Mm. We would not have caused that laha, even though it was remobilization of volcanic material. It wasn't from a recent eruption. Uh, and so to call it that would have been given the impression that the current eruption, which has its hazards confined to the crater rim and the crater itself, that the hazards had somehow gotten outside. And it hasn't. It's still mainly affecting the top part of the volcano. Um, once it's in this current phase. Okay, and we've also seen some uh, photos coming out of the, the crater with the 1979 or the old uh, steaming, seemingly steaming a bit more. What is all of that about? Well, again, that's to be expected. It's into the crater, which is a bowl shaped feature. It has a lot of sediments in it, and in those sediments, there's a lot of water because rain falls. And when rain falls, if you have a nice cup, it collects the water. What you have had happen is that a mass of hot rock has come into that bowl that has lots of water in it. And what you do when you do that is that you heat the water. The water essentially boils. So a lot of this, the, the gas that is coming out of the volcano, whether it is at the dome, old dome, it's coming out anywhere there's a crack, anywhere there's a space for it to come out. It, the, essentially the hot rock, the new, the new magma is boiling the water that is on the ground and the water is finding its way to the surface. And one of the easiest way to find its way to the surface is either at the very top where the magma is coming out, and that's where you have a lot of steam in, but also at the interface between the old dome and the new dome, there's lots of cracks and fissures. There's a lot of steam in there because that's the easier part. And even on the old dome itself, which is a, a mass of, of blocky rocks, which has lots of spaces, it's coming out there. So it's just steaming of groundwater and it's coming out wherever the the steam could find an easy path to the surface. So not necessarily anything to be of additional, to cause additional concern. I mean, what's the latest with the, with the um, yeah. dome? I know that we've put in some more monitoring equipment. Can you give a little bit of an yeah. update on that? Yeah, I mean, we, we constantly trying to improve the network and build up the amount of data we collect in it. And, and yesterday we put in a camera that allows us to see the dome in real time um, and it will help in terms of tracking its movement, its growth, its, its effusive rate, if you want to call it that way. So that's good. We have a camera, to, a camera at the summit. And we also put in something called an EDM reflector uh, or set of special, essentially mirrors that allow us to hit it with a, with a beam of light from the flanks and allow us to measure the distance precisely to that mirror. That would allow us to know if the point where the mirror is, which is on the southern crater flank, whether that point is moving. And that's associated with concerns we have about the dome, which is now pressing against that wall, but the dome has the ability to move it, which then gets into the possibilities of it collapsing and other kinds of hazards. So it's just a precaution to make sure we have that kind of information build up now, so that if it becomes more of a problem, we, we could, we would have had data that tells us how it is now versus how it changes. We'll see the changes, which is a key thing we're trying to find out about. Right, so it's all about being, making sure we have a very close watch on the volcano so that if activity yeah. changes or, or if people need yeah. to be impacted in a different way, we can provide sufficient warning to authorities. And where is the team 
based now? Because I know this week we're transitioning. We have a new team of, of scientists coming in. Um, yeah. Where is the team based? Well, the, the, the base of our monitoring operation has, and more than likely for the foreseeable future, will be the Belmont Observatory. For those who know, know who knows in this, it's not the Belmont on the windward side, it's the Belmont on the leeward side. The Belmont that is the area of St. Vincent that's called Belmont that is, lies between Chumaca and Rosal. Just before you get to Rosal, there's an area that's called Belmont. And in it, in Saint, after 79, the government established a, a, a building. They actually used it in 79. It was an old agricultural officer's house and it got transformed into a place where the scientists would be based who are monitoring and who are looking at the volcano and where the team that is monitoring the volcano during an ongoing period of unrest, as we are now, will be based. So that's where the base of operations are. But at the time, when we first came in, the observatory didn't have the facilities for people to stay, to sleep there. Uh, it's getting to that stage now, hopefully it will get to that stage shortly. So the scientists, people like myself, we stayed initially in Chateauvillet. That's where we were sleeping every night. But most of the time we were in Belmont at the observatory. But then we were doing a lot of work in Georgetown. So it made sense instead of us traveling from Chateauvillet to Georgetown and back. And, and initially we did that. Eh? We used to come back to where we were 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And then we said, no, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, we eventually, it's dangerous. So we moved physically to Georgetown to allow us to do a lot of uh, work there. But as soon as that was done, we moved back to Chateauvillet. But that doesn't mean our operational base has always been where the data is collected, where everything is looked at, is Belmont, and it has always been Belmont. And so once once that the observatory is is um, suitable for people to be sleeping, yeah. and that's where the, the team is going to be actually staying. Exactly. Um, and, and that's one of the things that the government have been pushing to do. In fact, we have workers up there today, fixing, you know, finishing up the building, um, finishing up the facilities. So I suspect by next week, or by as early as next week, you will have people on the site, some of the scientific staff would actually be staying in the building next to the observatory, which is which is all fitted for them to see. And they will be physically always there. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Richie, for the update. And again, reminding everyone to pay attention to the NEMO and the UESRC for official updates on the last Sufre eruption. Thanks again. Thank, Bye. thank you. Thank you, Stacey. Okay. Bye.